Thank you, Travis 1 and Travis 2. I'm not Travis. I'm sorry to disappoint you. I'm Daniel. All right. Let me ask you all a question. What do these three items have in common? We've got Lego Batman. We've got 550-piece candy bar puzzle. We have a 69 Camaro Z28 RS model car. I'll give you a hint. What they have in common is the opposite of what is going on in 2023. 2023 is finished. Time's up. All three of these are unfinished. They're incomplete. They're not put together. So today I want to talk about the topic of it is finished. When we think about something as being finished, we think about it as being complete or accomplished in one of three areas. Time, as we've talked about, work, and purpose. Now, time. All of these items have a very specific beginning. They're just a bunch of loose pieces right now. Each one has a specific end, what the image on the box represents, but the amount of time it will take to complete them varies. Some of them have recommendations, like this one says that it takes approximately five hours, but really we don't know exactly how long it takes. Then there is the second thing, purpose. It may be relaxation, it may be a time killer, maybe a pastime, maybe entertainment, maybe therapy. Whatever label you want to attach to it, each of these three things has a very specific purpose. This candy puzzle can't literally satisfy my wife's sweet tooth, but it can keep her preoccupied long enough that maybe she'll forget about her craving. I can't rev the engine of this Camaro and impress my buddies with it, but I can set it up on a shelf and tell everybody that one day when I have enough money, I'm going to own this bad boy, the real version. I can't make Lego Batman come to life and fight crime. But my 10-year-old boy can imagine that he's fighting crime when he plays with him. Time, purpose, and then thirdly, work. They all have a picture on the box and or printed instructions which give the detail of the work required to complete them. Let me illustrate these three things a different way. Time, work, purpose. Time, in 10 minutes, my sermon will be finished. Purpose, my goal of giving you a lasting object lesson hopefully will endure beyond these 10 minutes after I'm finished. And then work, all my preparation and all my study and all my hand gestures and all my spoken words and all my efforts will be finished. I will have completed my time, my purpose, and my work. Now, for a moment, let's imagine our lives through the lens of being complete as it relates to the three aspects of time, work, and purpose. And let's look at some biblical examples of each. Time, first of all. We all have a definitive beginning. I was born on Thursday, October 2nd, 1986 at 1.47 a.m. We all have a definitive end. I don't have that date in case you were waiting on it. Fortunately. <laughs> Amen. I don't know that date. I'm glad I don't know that date. I can't give it to you. But let's pause and let's consider for just a moment before moving on. God knew exactly when you would be born. And he knows exactly when you are going to die. As a matter of fact, he has predetermined those things. The Bible tells us in Psalm 139, 13, For thou hast possessed my reins, thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. The term covered means literally knit together. He put us together inside our mother's womb. Hebrews 9, 27, And as it is appointed unto men once to die, and after this, the judgment. Appointed. We have a divine appointment with death. But because I don't have God's infinite foreknowledge, I cannot know when I'm going to die. Therefore, I have an unspecified amount of time between those two fixed positions in time birth and death, which means that while God is sovereignly in control of those two fixed points in time, I am in control of what happens in the middle of those two fixed points. 
In other words, Brother Travis, I should do as Ephesians 5 tells me. I should walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. As Brother Travis has already told us, that word redeemed means to make the most of what we have. We treat time like a credit card, making purchases yeah. that we know we cannot afford. Good. When in reality, time is like an inheritance in a savings account waiting to be expended. When our time on earth is ended, can we look back and say we finished our time well? We maximized the allotted time that we had. Secondly, purpose. We were created for a specific purpose, and that is to bring honor and glory to God. And we follow our ultimate example of Jesus who shares that purpose with us. He prayed in the garden and he told his father, I have glorified thee on earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. Just a short while later on the cross, he said these words, It is what? Finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. It is finished in the Greek is actually one word. It is tetelestai. And it was commonly used in those days. It was used by merchants to mean the price is all paid. To Telestai, Christ paid it all. It was used by shepherds and priests when they found a perfect sheep ready for sacrifice. To Telestai, Christ is and was the perfect sacrificial lamb of God. It was used by servants when their work was complete. To Telestai, Christ, the obedient servant, finished the work the Father gave him to do. Christ willingly and obediently and deliberately gave up his life. He laid down his life Amen. for his friends. When we have lived out our time on earth, can we look back and say that we finished our purpose, the purpose for which we were created? Thirdly, work. Our lives involve work. And I don't just mean the physical kind. We have a spiritual work to complete. Paul understood this, which is why he wrote to Timothy at the end of his life, I have fought a good fight. I have kept, the, I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Paul is picturing his Christian life as a race, and he's saying he has broken the tape at the finish line. He has run his race to the best of his ability. The finish line has been crossed, and the results would last forever. When we have lived out our time on earth, when our purpose has been fulfilled, can we look back and say we put in the work? We ran the best race possible? As I wrap this up, our lives are very similar to these three objects in front of us, as I've attempted to illustrate in the short amount of time that I have. But there's one major area where our life is different than these examples. And that is, we don't get to see ahead of time the final result for which we expend our time and our work and our purpose. In other words, with all three of these examples, we are in the, the process of finishing them. We are actually working backwards from what the final image is supposed to look like. But when it comes to life, we can't see the final image. All we can see is what the Bible defines as a dark image, a dim image, a dark glass, a distorted mirror. We can see the parts, but we cannot see the final product. But God knows what the final product is. He knows what it's supposed to look like. Therefore, we should just seek to submit to Him because He knows what's best. Amen. And then be thankful for the fact that He lets us get involved in the process. Amen. Because think about it. If anybody knows how to finish what they start, it's God. Amen. He created the whole entire universe in seven, I believe, literal days. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all the host of them, says Genesis 2.1. And as amazing as that was and as amazing as that is, he then one-upped himself and he made me a new creation in Christ instantaneously. Yeah. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become 
new. Not only did I have a specific beginning physically, I also had one spiritually. And while he created the universe in seven days, how long has he been working on me? How long has he been working on you? We're still a work in progress, aren't we? But thank God we're in capable hands. Being confident, Paul said, of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. The old cliche saying still applies. Let go and let God. He is the one with the real ability and the real power of completing the daunting task of finishing what he has started in us. I can't turn this puzzle into actual candy. I can't turn this model car into a real car that I could drive. And I certainly can't turn this into the real Batman to fight crime. Likewise, I can't take this old lump of clay right here and do anything with it whatsoever of value. But if I allow God to mold me on his will in his time, according to his purpose, and with his work, I will become a complete, finished, and perfect image. The perfect image of Christ. It is a joy and a privilege to be able to know that you've tuned in. And I pray that today that the word of God that was shared will be a blessing to you. If somehow, some way that the Lord has spoke to your heart, and maybe you're uh, sitting where you are and you don't know for sure that you're saved by the grace of God and you've ever trusted Jesus Christ as a personal Savior, then I want you to know that the Word of God says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The Bible makes it very plain, for the wage of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. You say, how do I get saved? You have to trust in Christ and Christ alone. Repent of your sin and then know as the Bible says where Jesus says, I am the way. And I pray that today that that will be your desire to be able to seek out for the Lord Jesus Christ, to be able to trust him as a Lord and Savior. If you do that today and you repent of your sins and you take him as your Savior, would you do us a favor and contact our church office at 336-788-0551? We would love to be able to speak with you. We would love to be able to encourage you, maybe be able to help you find a local church no matter where you are today. And maybe even possibly disciple you. So we want to say thank you so much. And we are definitely going to be praying for you and this ministry that our church has. If you know you're saved and maybe the Lord spoke to you in a different way. And there's something heavy on your heart. Again, that same number, if you can contact us, we'll be so thankful to be able to reach out and be able to speak with you. But again, on behalf of the church and myself, thank you so much. And may God bless you.